This lecture is brought to you by Megger, a leading manufacturer of electrical test and measurement equipment. I've trusted Megger's equipment for years and have witnessed firsthand their commitment to education and supporting technical schools across the country. For a limited time, Megger is offering my viewers an exclusive discount on their next purchase on products sold through U.S. distributors. Simply visit us.megger.com slash bigbadtech for all the details. This lecture features the Megger AVO835 Digital Multimeter. The AVO800 series multimeters are as reliable and accurate as the historical AVO units, but now come with a range of features to meet today's standards of electrical testing. For more information on the AVO800 series multimeters and other Megger products, please visit us.megger.com. Amps, volts, ohms, AVO. The Megger AVO835 Digital Multimeter is the one tool that does it all. The Mega AVO835 Digital Multimeter, as the name implies, features multiple test and measurement functions integrated into a single portable package, including, but not limited to, AC and DC voltage and current measurements, resistance, temperature, phase sequence detection, and more. Today, we'll take a brief look at the phase sequence detector and the non-contact live circuit detection functions. As you're no doubt aware, the phase sequence of a three-phase AC system determines the direction of rotation for a motor. Swapping any two phases, purposely or accidentally, would see the motor rotate in the opposite direction. For obvious reasons, certain applications necessitate motors predictably rotate in a specified direction. Examples include, but are not limited to, drills and elevators. Imagine a drill bit drilling out when it's supposed to be drilling in, or worse yet, stepping it into an elevator on the ground floor, pressing the up button, only to have the elevator go down. These situations can be prevented by a technician knowing the phase sequence in advance and hooking up the motor as intended. One effective method to determine phase sequence is to use a multi-channel oscilloscope and simultaneously display all three waveforms in the same screen to measure the relative phase shift between the three lines. While possible, not everyone has access to an expensive multi-channel oscope, and not everyone that has an oscope knows how to use an oscope properly. Another easier option is to purchase a special purpose device called a phase sequence detector to do the job for you. A phase sequence detector is essentially an unbalanced three-phase AC circuit that lights up one lamp if the phase sequence is ABC and lights up another lamp if the phase sequence is BAC. You'll recall we examined the operational principle of a phase sequence detector in the phase sequence detector lecture, available at the Big Bad Tech channel. While effective and reliable, this option also presents challenges in that a phase sequence detector is yet another special purpose equipment you've got to buy and carry around with you all day. Wouldn't it be great if your digital multimeter had this ability? Well, check it out the Mega AVO835 does. To place the AVO835 into phase sequence detection mode, rotate the function dial to the selection with the three arrows arranged in a circular pattern. We'll explore other functions in other lectures. In this position, the AVO835 allows access to the black common terminal and the red live terminal on the left identified with a voltage symbol. Black lead into the black hole. Red lead into the red hole marked with volts. The general sequence is as follows. Given a three-phase AC system with three lines of unknown relation to one another, choose one of the lines as the reference. Place the black common lead on that chosen reference. For the purposes of identification, this will be number two. Then take the red live lead and place it on one of the two remaining lines. For purposes of identification, this is number one. Once the Mega AVO835 has captured enough data, it'll indicate it's ready to test the remaining third line with LOC. While keeping the black common lead on two, move the red live lead and place it on the third remaining line. For purposes of identification, this is number three. Be quick about it though, because you've got eight seconds to do this, otherwise the test starts over. The Mega AVO 835 compares the data in memory about one relative to two with the new data about three relative to two and displays one of two results. One, two, three, or three, two, one. One, two, three, means one leads two, which leads three, which if you think about it, is the same as two, three, one, and three, one, two, given repetitive cyclical operation. Similarly, three, two, one, means three leads two, which leads one, which again, if you think about it, is the same as two, one, three, and one, three, two, given repetitive cyclical operation. Now keep in mind, the numbers one, two, three, are meaningful to the technician and the AVO835 at the moment of test only and depend upon which lead the technician initially chooses as the two reference. If you had to perform this test on a number of different circuits intended to all have the same phase sequence, it's perhaps worth a moment of your time to make sure you perform each check in the exact same sequence. Here's an example of the phase sequence detection feature in operation. 
consider a three-phase AC system of unknown sequence landed on a three-phase AC circuit breaker. The colors black, red, orange might or might not mean something to somebody somewhere, but they don't mean nothing to you. It could be black, red, orange, red, orange, black, orange, black, red, orange, red, black, red, black, orange, or black, orange, red. Who knows? These three wires could be tied onto the tails of three different goats on three different hills in Klickitat County. The black wires landed on terminals 1 to 2. The red wires landed on terminals 3 to 4. The orange wires landed on terminals 5 to 6. Ignore these terminal numbers, as they mean nothing to the phase sequence detection test. Let's simply concentrate on the colors. Black, red, orange. Let's say we choose the central red wire as our reference. This will be 2, by placing the black common lead on the red wire. Let's now say we choose the left black wire as 1, by placing the red live lead on the black wire. After a moment, the ABO835 indicates that it's captured enough data for the comparison by saying LOC on the display. Keeping the black commonly in the red wire, we move the red live lead to the orange wire. This will be 3. After a moment, the ABO835 indicates 3, 2, 1, meaning the phase sequence is undoubtedly orange, red, black, which if you think about it, is the same thing as red, black, orange, which is the same as black, orange, red, given cyclical repetition. What's great about this test, it's repeatable and verifiable for any and all combinations of unknown wires and unknown phases. For example, rather than choosing the central red wire as a reference, let's start with the orange wire. If everything I'm telling you is true, the ABO835 should still identify the system as orange, red, black, red, black, orange, or black, orange, red. Make the rightmost orange wire a reference. This will be number two by placing the black common lead on the orange wire. Let's say we choose the left black wire as 1 by placing the red live lead on the black wire. After a moment, the AVO835 indicates it's captured enough data for the comparison by saying LOC on the display. Keeping the black common lead on the orange wire, we move the red live lead to the red wire. This will be 3. After a moment, the AVO835 indicates 1, 2, 3, meaning the phase sequence is undoubtedly black, orange, red, which if you think about it, is the same as orange, red, black, which is the same as red, black, orange, given cyclical repetition. This is our exact same observation from earlier. There you have it. You can be certain that the phase sequence is as indicated thanks to the phase sequence detection function. Given all the horribly bad, horrible things that could go wrong if you hook up motor up backwards, this is a great tool to have at the ready when working in the field. Let's now examine another handy function of the Mega AVO 835, the non-contact live circuit detector. As an analogy, consider a hive of murder hornets. Although it's entirely possible to do a hands-on check to see if a bee's nest contains an angry swarm by ripping it open and looking inside, however, it's perhaps safer to stand at a distance and listen for a buzz. This is akin to the non-contact live circuit detector. One could do a hands-on check of a circuit's operational status using the voltmeter function of the DMM. However, the non-contact live circuit detector lets you do so at a distance, without the need of leads. To place the AVO835 into non-contact live circuit detector mode, turn the selector switch to the symbol that looks like one winding of a transformer with a lightning bolt next to it. The non-contact live circuit detector has two sensitivity modes, high and low, changeable by pressing the yellow mode button in the center. The high sensitivity mode allows for detection at a greater distance. However, it might be erroneously triggered in an electrically noisy environment, whereas a low sensitivity range might be more suitable in an electrically noisy environment, albeit at a closer range. To use the non-contact live circuit detector, one simply waves it in close proximity to a suspected live circuit. Here's the non-contact live circuit detector indicating that this plug is live with an audible alarm and a visible light. Now when I open the breaker surfacing this plug, the non-contact live circuit detector indicates that this plug is most likely not live. It is always a recommended practice to verify this using a DMM in voltmeter mode. Long story short, a quick non-contact live circuit test from a distance Sure beats walking headfirst into a nest of hornets. All right, that's about it for today. In conclusion, we examine the phase sequence of the non-contact live circuit detector functions in the Mega AVO835 digital multimeter. We'll examine other functions and features of this DMM in later lectures. Thank you very much for your attention and interest. We'll see you again during the next lecture of our series. Remember to tell your Lazy Lab partner about this resource, and be sure to check out the Big Bad Tech channel for additional resources and updates.